mutual funds typically charge four different kinds of fees. The first is a management fee, and it's expressed as an annual percentage of the assets under management, or AUM. And a portion of this is allocated each day, even though it's sort of expressed as an annual percentage. Uh, if they just did it on one day, then people would sell the fund the day before the fee was charged, then buy it back the day, the, uh, the day after. And so it's uh, allocated each day. And the way this works is they take the annual fee, they divide it by the number of days, and they multiply that very small percentage by the assets under management, and they remove that amount of money in cash, which lowers the NAV by a tiny, tiny fraction uh, every single day. A front-end load is a sales commission paid to a broker to put investors into the fund. And so I can go to um, my brokerage site, and if I buy a fund that has a listed front-end load, when I buy the fund for every $100 that I put into the fund, if it's, for example, a 5% front-end load, then only $95 of every 100 actually is used to buy the fund. The fund then redeems that pays to um, returns to the actual broker that sold me the fund the extra $5, and that's a commission. And this can vary by the size of the investment, and in a minute we'll talk about different mutual fund share classes that uh, uh, will vary these fees. A back-end load, also called a contingent deferred sales charge or a CDSC, is a redemption cost. And so if I buy the fund and I immediately sell it, then I only get 95% of my money back. But if I wait a year, then I, the deferred sales charge decreases. It goes from 5% to 4%, 3%, 2%, and they decrease over time. And the idea is to encourage people to leave their money in the fund. And so if I'm going to leave my money in the fund for a very long time, I don't pay a back-end load. 12B1 fees are special fees that are allowed by SEC Rule 12B-1, and so they're referred to by this fee, uh, by this uh, SEC Rule number. And the manager of the fund can use the fund's capital to pay for the distribution of annual reports and the distribution of prospectus. Uh, these must be less than 1%. And the idea is that these are different from management fees in that they pay for different things, but for the standpoint of the investor, we just add them together because what the manager uses the money for when they take it from us is irrelevant. Uh, let's talk about mutual fund share classes for open-ended funds. Remember, closed-end funds, they have a single class. You're buying them from someone else who owns it. But an open-ended mutual fund, many of them will have more than one type of share that you can buy, and the fees will vary across the different types of share classes. So, for example, uh, type class A shares, they charge a front load together with a smaller fee. Bs don't have a front load, but they have a high CDSC, contingent deferred sales charge. Uh, Bs, when the fee is done, turn into As. Class C char uh, shares charge a higher 12B1 fee. Uh, and Class I shares, these are often known as institutional shares, and they'll have a very high minimum, but very low fees. And so they'll cost uh, $100,000 minimum in terms of your investment, but they won't have a front load and they'll charge a very low fee. And Class R shares are often used for retirement plans, and so their fees are structured in such a way that they don't charge a load, but they do charge uh, a small 12B1 fee. And then there are shares for uh, no-load funds. No-load funds will also have the institutional shares with a very high minimum and um, charge a much lower fee. Well, they won't charge the 12B1 fee. And then Class N shares. Not every fund has every type of share, but most mutual funds will have multiple types of shares. And so the fees can vary depending on which of the shares you buy for that mutual fund. Mutual funds pay no taxes. They are pass-through entities, uh, like, a, like a partnership is a pass-through entity. And so they pay no taxes, and so all taxes, either gains or income, are distributed and are the responsibility of the shareholders. And so you will receive a document from the mutual fund indicating all of the distributions, and you are responsible for these taxes. Personally, the fund itself pays no taxes.